All right, greetings again from Hanover. I'm here with Jurgen, which is the head of AI uh, at Schneider Electric, Chief Data Officer, right? Not 100%. I'm, 100%. I'm leading what we call new value streams, which is the AI consulting services and bespoke AI solution services, which is a part of the AI hub, which is led by Philipp Rambach, who was here on Monday. Got it. So, very hot topic, artificial intelligence. It's, it's every, you look online, it's, it's, it's on daily news every day. Chat GPT, uh, there are folks that think that by 2030 there will be two types of companies, whether one backcrop that, that, that doesn't use AI and one that gets on this uh, journey. So, uh, I'd like to understand a bit, you know, how do you see the role of AI evolving within the industrial sector and particularly the, 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 the verticals that Schneider Electric covers? So, in industry in general, it's a very clear shift from many things in the industry were reactive or condition-based. So people are reacting to outcomes and try to do it better the next time. The problem is when you try to do it better the next time, you already lost significant amounts of value, money, you boost too much carbon. So that is where AI comes to play, to get you from being reactive to proactive control, to say you observe what is going on in a factory and I just 20 minutes ago, I discussed the use case with one of my colleagues where we jointly concluded the customer is leaving 50 or more percent of the value behind because they're still living in a very, let's say, control-oriented uh, world. And they not understand that just reporting some numbers doesn't make a change. The change comes when you put things in action and this is where artificial intelligence comes to play. You say, you put a system in place which monitors in real time what is going on, compares it to what is my ideal state under the current given constraints. And this is what many people already forget. They don't look outside here. The day is blue sky. We have a decent temperature, a light breeze of wind with a moderate humidity. Believe it or not, if you've been in the food and beverage industry, that has an impact on right. how your chocolate or how your ice cream or whatever you produce comes out and how you need to set up your plant. You cannot just take, okay, my EPC told me this is the standard set point. Right. It's not working. So when the, the second part in the, the eight industry segments Schneider is operating, they all similarly have a, a need for artificial intelligence. They all recognize that they need to do something. They need to start adopting it. And when you see in the cloud and service provider segment, when obviously these guys, the hyperscalers and so on, and then, yeah, they are very used to it, so they are not shying away, they're not hitting like, oh, what is this guy talking about? Right. Never heard about it. And when you go to more traditional industries, you need to have the right language with you. So if you speak in chat GPT, GPT-4, <laughs> deep learning and all of that, they will look at you and say, um, what do you want from me? Right. I'm a big believer to showing examples. So one of the reasons I was excited about this conversation is because uh, drilling deeper on, on how Schneider Electric is, is using it to drive innovation and transformation for, for its own operations. When somebody in the audience may look at, I, I have to look at our operations. It may, it may not be as simple, but it, 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 at least a conscious decision assigns somebody to be the chief data officer or chief AI officer, whatever they might be. And that someone takes responsibility is the first step. And it just reminds me two weeks ago, I had uh, with one of the largest utilities in the world, a conversation. Uh, Philippe and I had a presentation on what AI can do for utilities. And the CEO said, this question, what's holding us back to do it as well? <laughs> and so we concluded and had a workshop with their chief digital officer in the afternoon. And the first thing the chief digital officer said to me is, um, there's a trash can, put all your sales slides in there. I'm not interested in any product uh, presentation. Okay, as a statement. <laughs> so I said, okay, fine, what do you want? And he said, you are Schneider Electric, you have more than 200 factories and some other stuff around the world. You are already on the digital transformation path. What works for you? Right. What has delivered value? Tell me that because this is where I want to start. I don't want to start anymore 
on a green field with an empty piece of paper and try to figure it out. I want to benefit from your experience. And this is, uh, this is something where we as Schneider get these questions way more from the customer. The customer doesn't see us as a tech consulting company who wants to play with technology or who wants to sell technology. They want to speak to people who have literally said, okay, all well, that part is just toys for big boys and that junk actually delivers value. And you will see, I mean, we in Schneider, we use uh, chatbots, variations of GPT, chat GPT, and we got it to, we make sensible use of it because right. imagine we get thousands and thousands of customer requests every day. And in the old days, well, somebody has to read the request, needs to scratch their head and say, what well, I'm gonna do with it? From, oh, sorry customer, nice try, but you cannot just trick money out of us. Right. To, it's a really uh, a case where they need to send it to product development or support, and they need to figure out uh, how to help this customer. So having here smart, clever tools in place, it makes the response time faster, which makes the customer happy and it makes us shifting these resources which were reading eight hours of their emails and then just <laughs> forwarding them to say, okay, now we put you in a place where you actually generate value. So right. we haven't fired a single person, but we shifted um, the resources um, to do more meaningful and more valuable things. So this is all this, this miracle that you think AI kills people's jobs holds for us not true. We just make people do more meaningful things and create right. even more value. Yeah, I, I think it just it just make, makes you more efficient. And I fully agree. I, I spend over Christmas break looking how does this apply to, to us? How does it save my time? For instance, from as a, from a digital publication perspective, whether analyzing lots of videos, create a summary, what I should look at whether it's creating a summary of all the, the press releases and come up with something that summarizes and apply the human for that mm -hmm. other part. So it, it makes us more efficient. But I'd be curious if you want to double click a little bit more on some of the AI uh, use cases within Schneider that you may have. So you mentioned about utilities, you mentioned some, how you analyze lots of projects from within Schneider. What are some of them that they might apply for, let's say a manufacturer, for instance? Uh, so, I mean, is that we have those use cases in customer management, mm -hmm. uh, warranty, services, spare parts, which is a huge topic for us when there are lots of components out in the world that need to be maintained, they need spares, they need even field service reps coming out there. So alone there, for example, one of the, the newest use cases we just completed is what we call maintenance or service visit optimization. So we need okay. it for ourselves because we need to maintain our own stuff in our factories. Right. This was the trigger. And when we accidentally showed that to a customer, he said, why you cannot do this for me? Mm -hmm. I have 37 sites in the US, and usually what happens is something pops up, somebody comes out, fixes this, an hour later he leaves. Why can this person not stay the whole day mm -hmm. and do X, Y, Z additional things right. in a meaningful fashion so that we save two or three additional visits uh, in the next two, three weeks. So, meaning now looking at the information, analyzing the situation, say, ah, okay, this is the immediate actions which we have to tick off the box that the lights stay on. And by the way, we can do this 10 other tasks mm -hmm. because the guy anyhow has to drive out there. So let's, let's do him that as well. And in the next four, six, eight weeks, we have peace, everything runs, the up, the immediate effect for the customer is higher uptime because every, every time we go out there, you need to shut down something. It's the same thing every time we go on our shop floor and fix something, we have to shut it down. We don't produce. So you see there's an inherent element for us where we say, okay, we do it better for ourselves and the customers are benefiting. So that is an, is an actual use case. Another one is it's around energy efficiency, production efficiency. Mm -hmm. um, often utilities are managed in a way Production tells them I need so much energy, I need so much steam, hot water, compressed gas. And utility has never had the ability to challenge that. So they, they couldn't say, hey guys, you know, we just 40% overproduced and we dumped all the hot water. 
because you gave me the wrong number or you, something else broke down in the process. So we would spend all the energy to generate hot water right. for nothing. And, and, and how far, if, if you don't mind me pausing just a little bit on that, okay. just the parenthesis, how far are we from, from giving systems or models like the ChatGPT or others maybe trained based on the Schneider historical data or its customer historical data to be able to empower those folks to ask the conversational language and say, okay, how much do I really need and, and, and then give realistic numbers based on their own data, not what something was created. So you will find lots of startups claiming they found a miracle AI product <laughs> which can work in one and the same form across multiple customers, continents, right. and sites. And we have surpassed that point, that's just mumbo jumbo. Artificial intelligence does not work that way. Mm -hmm. So if you want to outperform an operator, which is the first target you have if you create AI, you need to outperform the human. Sure. So if you take an operator from a China, Chinese or Asian-based site and stick him into a European plant, he will perform terrible because everything is different. And, right. and vice versa. So now if you take an AI trained and created for a site in the Middle East and then you stick it in a North American site, it's also not going to work. Right. So what we came to the point is we create the solution based on the physics you influence or the right. process you influence and bundle that as a service with a training module. So what we do is we and I always use the comparison to Google's TensorFlow. Everybody thinks TensorFlow is op open source. <laughs> it's not, it's a miracle. Uh, it has a wonderful public API which allows you to do thousands of things. But there comes a point when you trace the source code, you see, call DeepMind from here forward right, in right. London if you want something beyond the point. And we say, why can we not do the same thing? So we create this public API where the customer connects the data stream from his uh, PLCs, uh, from his control systems, from his uh, Foxboro historian, uh, body corner, whatever it is, it flows in there. And the first step is the energy efficiency solution for the specific process adjusts itself to the site. So it takes the, the local weather data, it takes demonstrated performance, and it sets it up to outperform the local operator. And with Currently, now with the compute power we have available, this is a matter of hours, or sometimes a matter of minutes, and in the worst case, a matter of days, to have it up and running. But the point is then you go from a 70% solution to a 95% accurate solution. Right. And, and this is where you surpass the human operator because you're now in a, in a position to process so much more information in such a short time to give well better uh, recommendations of what needs to be done. And the other thing is, this is an implicit element we built into is, we can capture experience. Meaning when we recommend an action, the operator looks at it and says, I don't agree. So we said, okay, then tell us what you think is the right thing to do. And then we let the system do it. Right. If the guy is right, then we say, thank you for the input and we learn. Learn from it and make it better next time. <laughs> exactly, so when we came to the same situation the next time, we have another trick up our sleeve and can say, hey, we can do this. And we can also see when, for example, uh, usually we, uh, we provide the top three recommendations. It's a bit also to keep the system constantly learning and improving. And when the operator now chooses two or three instead of the top rated one, we also want to see, was he right or wrong? If he was wrong, then obviously we will learn from that and make it the next time even clearer that number one is the number one. But if he was right, then we would say, okay, maybe we have to change the picture and say, okay, for these circumstances, number three is the better solution than one and two. So it enables us now to inherently capture human experience, which is for a lot of companies today a very important element because the hit, we're hitting a generation which retires and carries a fortune of knowledge. Right, yeah. I just heard some staggering uh stats on 50% of the operators retiring within the next seven years, which uh, we need to capture that knowledge. So if you're in the audience, you have questions, feel free to post them there. We'll get it to the appropriate subject matter expert. We'll have to have you back. We'll love to understand better what sort of uh, uh, 
competencies uh, are required to get on this journey, but uh, it's just a matter of, of, of making a conscious decision as well to go on that direction and then reach out to, to subject matter experts such as um, Jurgen or others to sort of guide you in that direction. Thank you. Well, Thank you. It's a pleasure.